All right, so welcome back to Breaking Dawn this morning. And we're just about 13 minutes away from the hour of 8 o'clock. And we got Seth Wilder aboard with us. Uh, Seth is joining us via Zoom. So we're going to bring him in right now. Seth. Good morning. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago and all of our viewers. Hope you all are having a good morning. Nice, man. Um, so, Seth, we want to deal with, a, um, it, was it information put out by the Ministry of Health pertaining to salt? Yes. All yes, right. Yes. Let me, let me, um, let me, let me get the, the, the guys in the back to put up the, the, um, the actual post that was put out on their, their social media. All right. So this is the, the post that was put out by the Ministry of Health um, in terms of salt. So it said, as the weekend mm -hmm. approaches, remember to make healthy eating choices. Too much salt in your diet can lead to health issues such as high blood pressure and strokes. Check out the full eight-page guide in the link below, including some healthy tips on your salt intake. Now, on that um, guide, it said mm -hmm. salt in bracket sodium. The recommended daily intake of salt is one teaspoon or 2300 milligrams per day. Your body needs salt to maintain the body's water balance, aid in nerve impulses and muscle function, control body temperatures during sweating. Uh, too much salt in your diet can lead to high blood pressure, which can result in heart attacks and or strokes. And then it have ways to reduce salt. Um, they're telling you to eat more of these. Fresh whole foods such as bananas, tomatoes and sweet potatoes, fresh seasoning, herbs and spices, and less of processed meats and um, fish such as salt fish, sausages, canned meats, um, sauces such as barbecue sauce and soy sauce. Set over to you. All right. So from time to time, our government, the WHO, would come out and put these salt restrictions or remind people to reduce their salt consumption. Mm -hmm. I even saw it was either earlier this year or last year where they stated that salt is the major killer in the world, right? So I was quite amazed. So what I'm going to do, of course, I'm going <laughs> to share my screen. So yeah. I'm going to share, share the screen and let's take a look at this here. So this is from National Library of Medicine. Okay. PubMed. This was published on the 1st of June, 2021. Sodium intake, life expectancy, and all cause mortality. So this was a study, a cohort study, it's an observational study, but a very well done one. Of course, all observational studies have limitations. And they looked at sodium content or salt consumption among 181 countries. And then they look at life expectancy, right? Right. So let's let's read a little bit. So it says since dietary sodium intake has been identified as a risk factor for cardiovascular disease and premature death, high sodium intake can be expected to curtail lifespan. We tested this hypothesis by analyzing the relationship between sodium intake and life expectancy, as well as survival in 181 countries worldwide. Hmm. So it's, they decided to analyze this because, you know, for years we're hearing that, you know, salt could shorten your yeah. lifespan all right now we're not going to read through all the details of it I want to jump down to the conclusion it says our observation of sodium intake correlating positively with life expectancy and inversely with all cause mortality worldwide in high income countries urges against dietary sodium intake being a culprit of curtailing lifespan or a risk factor for premature death these data are observational and should not be used as a base for nutritional interventions. Right. In other words, after they did this study of 181, uh, 181 um, countries, they found the opposite. What they found that people with higher, the places with higher salt consumption, they had longer life expectancy. So it shocked them because right. I actually have the original study here, which they were quite shocked to see the findings in this so here it is here look what it said the present findings are startling in view of the numerous studies showing a direct association between dietary sodium intake and blood pressure however in most studies 
the slope of the correlation between sodium intake and blood pressure is rather shallow. Now, there are many times I've read those studies and realized the same thing. Mm -hmm. It was very, very shallow. They didn't really get any conclusive evidence showing that salt is affecting your blood pressure in a negative manner. Right. It says, in recent comprehensive Cochrane meta-analysis, sodium reduction from an average high usual intake to an average level of 65 millimoles per day resulted in a decrease in systolic diastolic blood pressure of 0.1 um, and 5.7 over 5, um, 2.9 right. uh, in participant with normative and normal tensive hypertension, respectively. Weak evidence indicate that these effects may be a little greater in Black and Asian subjects. In this context, we should mention that blood pressure merely remains in surrogate endpoint that not consistently parallel outcome endpoints of death, heart attack, and stroke. So we're saying that the blood pressure didn't really say that this is what caused people to die or, or so ah. forth. Yeah, because we cannot jump to certain conclusions. conclusions. Yeah. And, you know, all the other factors weren't taken into consideration. Right. All right. Now, it's very long. The information is very long. What I want to say is, you say, oh, um, let, let's say it says, it says um, current evidence, despite metallurgical limitations, suggests that most of the world's population consume a moderate, a moderate range of dietary sodium, which is around one to two teaspoons of salt that is not associated with increased cardiovascular risk, and that the risk of cardiovascular disease only increases with sodium intake exceeds five grams per day. Of okay. note, however, data are strictly observational and should not be used as a base for nutritional intervention. We therefore purposefully refrain from making any projection or dietary recommendation as time and again were inappropriately made with regards to reducing sodium intake despite the lack of evidence of hard endpoints. In other words, what they are simply saying Based on their observational studies of 181 countries, they still cannot come out and say, reduce your salt, because we don't have any sure evidence. Okay. We don't have any sure data. Right. And this is why I find it interesting, because this also reviewed stuff, all the, the studies from in the past over the years. And over the years, it have always been a back and forth with if salt is good or if it is not good. Right. And based on not having any concrete data, no country, no government, nowhere should be putting any restrictions or on salt. salt. So, well, let me show you something else. Yeah. Let, let me show you something else here with regards to gestational salt. Now, this information is very interesting. It says the influence of gestational salt restriction on fetal growth and in development of diseases in adulthood. This is showing that when parents have low salt consumption during the in, in uh, when it comes to conception and the gestational period during pregnancy, it can cause an increased uh, death rate among uh, with, with regards to infants. So that can increase it and it can also cause them to be born with more um, diseases, the possibility for more diseases. So mortality okay. rate, infant mortality rate goes up with reduced, with reduced salt consumption in the pregnant mother and even during conception when parents are low on salt. Wow. Right? When they did the animal studies, animals that were, were born to parents that were on lower salt, were born with retardation. Okay. Right? Apart from a 65% uh, reduction in um, in birth rate. So, there's so much of data showing that a lack of salt could cause so much problems and inconclusive data with regards to too much salt too much consumption. Salt. Yeah. I am still baffled as to why they are continuously pushing to reduce salt, salt consumption yeah, uh, in in the in mm -hmm, good yeah no i was i was just i just want to make the point or, or ask the question and just in a little time that we have we just got a couple minutes um isn't salt like one of the greatest healing um agents i mean to me like salt, salt is of extreme importance for the human body in fact because uh, if you consume um and, and you eat something and you don't have enough salt 
you you wouldn't absorb as much nutrients as the body could have this is why every IV, the foundation of all IV is a saline solution right the found of all IVs is a saline solution in order to maximize absorption of yeah. nutrients so it plays a key role with regards to that it plays a key role with regards to maintaining homeostasis in the body so when yeah. it comes to the, the the ph of your extracellular matrix it plays an important role with regards to that it plays an important role with regards to balancing the water table in your body telling yourself how much water to hold how much salt to release all of these things salt have so many important functions that by putting restrictions on it is going in the lack of evidence is basically foolish unless you have an agenda in keeping people sick that's the only conclusion i could make if you have an agenda in keeping people sick then sure sure put salt restrictions you're going to have a lot of sick people people going to go to the hospital now to be placed on drips to getting the salt from you and you only yeah because right? yeah that's that, the only yeah, reason they i could see they get salt yeah it's true um right well, and if you go private hospital six hundred thousand dollars for a bag of drips for drips and drips are salt. Right? we all know that um we all the time though but um mm -hmm. just just to put it out there the people you know there's some information on salt um and the type of salt that you use you want to get the salt with the most minerals um which would so be you have sea, the Celtic salt. sea salt yeah himalayan pink salt and, himalayan and the other sea salt. salt yeah because yeah. look look and i encourage people mouth, read the labeling even with your mouth with your gums when you have problems with your gums they tell you gargle some warm water with salt yeah yeah because <laughs> also antiseptic as well correct it's also antiseptic so, also right? salt 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 is so good for so many things mm -hmm. and and at the end of the day you can't season food without salt you could pour more green right. seasoning everything inside of that correct correct but if it has no salt good. in it when it is good the, the and 97.5 percent plus of all the water that exists is salt water 97.5 percent making it one of the most abundant things in existence yeah so it's kind of interesting that we have demonized something that is needed for when our sick, existence when you're sick and you have the cold and you go in the salt water it is bring down all the cold you have a cut correct you're correct. going salt water the cut heal is everything salt good for so i mean i can't see how something that's so good for your body um could be could be advised to be restricted to a great extent so but we all the time it, it we all don't the time have say. any any data to back that so yeah. they, they should just leave it alone that's what i find they should do. leave yeah. it alone all right so i'll tell you what thanks a lot for joining us man as usual good Th information uh, having me yeah man so next week all right cool you're still looking weird without the beard eh? all right so i'll tell you what <laughs> that is set by all aboard we got to wrap things up for today but yeah um it's amazing um salt salt is just an amazing thing it's it's like one of the the best things we have on the face of the planet you know it's good for so many things um we wrap up tomorrow